Good afternoon. We invite you to gather in silence and observe a time of prayer and reflection and meditation before the service begins. God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And we loved darkness. We humans love darkness rather than light. Join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, who by reason of thy burning love for us, has willed to be crucified and to shed thy most precious blood, O Jesus. For the redemption and salvation of our souls, look down upon us here gathered together online in remembrance of thy moment, most sorrowful passion and death. Fully trusting in thy mercy, cleanse us from sin by thy grace. Sanctify our toil, Give unto us, un, unto all of these who d are dear to us, our daily bread. Sweeten our sufferings, bless our families, and to the nation so sorely afflicted, grant thy peace, which is the only true peace, so that by obeying thy commandments we may come at last to the glory of heaven. Amen. Hear now our youth speak the words and the scriptures relaying the passion story. May your ears be open to hear God's word in a new and refresh. May your hearts be open to Christ's message for you. Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew this place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So, if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authority seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are you not also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter was also with them, standing and warming himself. The high 
priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken only to the world. I have also taught in synagogues and in the temple. Where all Jewish people come together, I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them, and they know me what I said. And when he said this, one of the officers standing by the struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is it how you answered the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong, but if I have spoken rightly, why will you strike me? Honest, then said him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Simon Peter was standing and warning himself. They said to him, Are you not also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of those whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Capus to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evil door, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful to, for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word in which Jesus had spoken, to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did the others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed me over to you. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not far from the world or from this world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You said that I am a king, uh, for this I was born, and for this I have come to, into this world. To bear witness to the truth, everyone who is of truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. We have having released for you the king of the Jews. They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me? 
Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. That was the day of the preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Go, Galgotha. And there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. The soldier who crucified Jesus then took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from the top to the bottom. So they said, Let us not tear us, let us not tear, but cast lots for to see whose it will be shall. This, this was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my, clo for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, knowing that all was now finished, said, I thirst. A bowl of vinegar stood there. So they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they may be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it was born witness. His testimony is true, and he who knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced.
After this, Joseph of Amorithia, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for the fear of religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was closed at hand, they laid Jesus there. Hear now the benediction. May we remember Jesus Christ's sacrifice for us, that he was an obedient unto death, even death on a cross for our sins. May we live out loud his teachings and God's great love for all people through our actions, through our words, through our, our very spirits. May we go in peace this day remembering the sacrifice of our Savior. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.